so I, I guess a couple of things. The first is that um, the hierarchy that's shown on the left now is Bob's hierarchy. Uh, in the last version of the demo, it was the natural file system hierarchy on the server, which is not terribly interesting to anybody as I understand it. But this is Bob's hierarchy. So uh, if you pick, for example, interfaces, uh, we see six columns worth of documents as we mouse over a document, the uh, corresponding file is loaded up. Over on the right, the gray stripe, the vertical gray stripe uh, indicates where you need to stay with your mouse if you're going to keep the current column expanded. If you move to the right or to the left, you'll expand the column to the right or to the left. Um, so that, that hasn't changed. That's still pretty much the same. The other thing that hasn't changed mostly is that if you pick a category like essays, for example, that has a huge number of documents, um, we won't show them all at once. We'll actually create an outline of all of the subcategories of essays in this case, and selecting a, a, a subhead, a subcategory will bring up the corresponding categories, which again, you can mouse over and bring up, bring up the pages. Uh, so nothing, nothing new there. I did do two things that are new. Um, first of all, if you search now, it's not a string search. It actually does a, a Google web service search against uh, wiki. excuse me, code.jsoftware.com. So the results you get back are um, a little more reasonable. They're not just string hits on titles. They are actually full text search hits. And again, we've got uh, squeezed columns, compressed columns, and you can move to the right to decompress a column and, uh, and see, the corresponding, see the corresponding pages. Um, I have to say that the amount of time it takes for the web service to come back is, I, I, I think, inappropriate to the application. Um, I think it should, I, I, I'd like to have a much more responsive web search to the point where as you're typing characters, we're showing results. And it turns out that SQLite has what is apparently a pretty good full text search facility. Um, so in principle, you could populate a SQLite database with the full contents of the wiki uh, and do full text searches against it. And it's, Performance, according to the documentation, is pretty good on the order of tens of milliseconds to get a response back, rather than the second or more that I'm waiting, uh, that I waited to get the response to this search for random, for example. So I'd really like to do that. The, the challenge, and I, I don't know how big a challenge it would be, is that the SQLite binaries that uh, ship with J do not include the full text search facilities. So I need to swap in different binaries. I don't, I don't know what the implications of that are. Uh, Nuvoq hasn't changed. The one thing that has one major difference, major improvement, I guess, is forums. So uh, the forum interface currently is a very web style interface where you lower yourself into a cave and then you lower yourself into a deeper cave and then you find an actual forum post and then you climb out of one of the caves and you lower yourself into a different cave. And the approach I took here was to say, well, look, here are all the years that we've got archived, uh, 2006 through 2023. And for each year here are all the months we've got archived. And as you mouse over each one, we'll show you the, the uh, subject matter excuse me, the subject headings, the subjects from the threads for that month. And I think I've been through almost all of the years and all of the months and they all fit on my screen. So there's no need for a scrolling mechanism. And then what happens is as you select a, a, a category, excuse me, a subject, um, you see the first message in that thread and you also see the people who contributed to that thread in order and you can load up their contributions on the fly. And I, I think what this does is it changes the review of the forum archive 
from being sort of a spelunking expedition, lowering yourself into a cave complex and sort of groping in the dark on the one hand and then pulling yourself out again to lower yourself somewhere else, to more like sitting on the couch leaping through a magazine. Um, you're not highly motivated. You're just sort of wondering if something interesting shows up. And I think this experience is closer to being on the couch and leaping through a magazine than it is to what I characterize as spelunking. And I think what that could do, and I, this is just my first pass. I don't say that this is in any sense the right answer, but I think what that could do is drive a lot more traffic to the forum archives if, if we could make that work. Um, and that's about it for new stuff. One of the things I'd really like to do is integrate, uh, sorry, is make search work with the forum archive and come up with some way of showing the results in the context of this years by months matrix. One of the things that's interesting about this is this is actually a four level deep hierarchy that you're navigating. You're navigating years, within a year you're navigating months, within a month you're navigating threads and within a thread you're navigating messages. And but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like, as I say, a spelunking expedition. It feels like you're looking at a um, satellite map and just moving around on that map. Um, the other way to think about it is you're moving ever forward. There's no such thing as going back. Um, and I believe that's all I have for this week. If there are comments or questions, I'd be very interested. I think of ideas. I don't know how, how what the payoff versus effort is going to be like for them. Um, one thing I'm thinking about here is that threads will often span months and even years sometimes. And I don't know if your UI can, can take advantage of that. Um, that's Another an is question is the the whole there's there's a whole whole tangent related to searching that I that I have various thoughts on I don't know how worthwhile those thoughts are though. Um, well, please go ahead. Well, there's okay. There's three different ways of approaching. There's is there's local searching and there's remote searching, and um, because of web view limitations, I think we're you're favoring local searching, although if you could spin off a um, get HTTP request in a thread and then feed the result into the web view, that would probably let you take advantage of threading. Um, although with a little bit of lag because there's, you still lag for remote, remote requests. So that's, that's one perspective. Another angle on this, on the remote side, is there's um, web, you know, like Google searching where you constrain it to a site. You use a, use a site parameter and then you say like, yeah. And, and you could even constrain it to the forms by throwing a Piper mail in it, depending on whether they've indexed it, that, you know, that, that would get you, that's, that gives you a quick implementation, even if it's not a highly performant, you know, really a low latency implementation. And then the local side where you get your high, your, um, your high speed, low latency re responses, if you, if you've done it right, um, the, there's, um, there's, there's the SQLite approach they mentioned where you might have to do new binaries. There's also J approach, I should put my, there's J approaches where um, is, is just, first off, there's a flat text search, like what um, I think Chris Burke did, if you, if, which runs into limits once you start getting into a certain volume of documents, but it's easy to put together. You just string together documents, it's a flat thing, and, and you do a binary search on the separators to find out which document you're in. Um, there's also indexing which gets into where SQLite it probably has stuff pre-built for you where in, in J you'd have to build yourself where you say, here's words that are likely to be searched on, here's here's their locations and or here's you know, here's a pre a pre-built search for that. It's a space time trade-off right. and, and also a lot of programmer time needs to go into it to make it work well. But that's right. that's that's one of the possibilities that I don't it's probably not th this stage of the game where you'd want to be focusing your attention. It's, the, it's interesting. I go ahead. I'm, I'm I'm just winding down. That's fine. It's it's interesting. I I tried to use the uh, native wiki search facility, and it works. Um, 
unfortunately, the num header, which indicates how many results you want, does not seem to make it past something. So I can specify num equals 100, for example, but num equals 100 does not get passed through to, to the Google search uh, service. And the result of that is no matter what, I only get 10 or fewer results back. So I'm actually hmm. using a Google meta search uh, facility for which I pay the princely sum of $30 a month. And that gives me that gives me my hundred. I assume that's a problem that could be fixed with the wiki search, either by fixing my code or fixing something else. Um, I, I, I'd much rather use the native wiki facilities. But even more than that, it looks like SQLite does have. I mean, stemming and building inverted indexes and full text searching solved problem. There, there's no good reason, I think for anybody to spend time re-implementing that. And SQLite, according to the documentation, as I read it, seems to have a very good implementation of full text search, certainly good enough for what it is that we'd like to do. Now, whether it would handle uh, code search, I, well, I don't know, you know, special characters. Is it indexing on uh, Wait, so post colon, you, for example? Couldn't tell so you're it. saying you do a, a, a wiki search? And you do like limit equals 500 and you still get only 10? Yeah. Interesting. I, it's entirely possible I'm doing something wrong, but when I do the same thing with the Google service, I get my, I get the you know appropriate number of results. I, I'd forgotten you'd mentioned that, Ed, but I, if I had to guess, and I haven't done any looking into it because you moved on to the Google and that solved that problem, I would guess there's a setting within a media wiki that limits that search but I'm just guessing at that because I know other areas like my trees and stuff, there's limits to how, how there's, you can set a, mm. have a setting to whatever you want. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I assume it's entirely fixable. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. And I, I don't mind using my own service. Sorry. The service to which I subscribe for now, but I'm, yeah. I'm really thinking I, the, I mean, Bob, you know, when, when you ran the startup, the setup procedure, it was yeah. two minutes of downloading files and filling up tables and it, it was just grim. And that's nothing. I think to do it right, we'd need to download and fill up, download a lot more files and fill up a lot more tables to make it work. And my current thinking, and I, I tried not to think about deployment early on, but I think we're far enough along now where it's reasonable to think about it. What I'm imagining is that you would produce on the server a, a single SQLite database, a single SQLite file that could be downloaded by a user of this application. Uh, and there'd be a certain cost to that, but the, the certainty of downloading a single large file versus downloading thousands of small files and indexing them uh, and so on, uh, I think is very attractive. So I'm imagining, I mean, on my ISP can handle a hundred megabytes in an iBlick. It's not, it's not a big deal. I, so I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I had just now tried doing a uh, media wiki search and I set a limit of 500 and my search gave me 393 results back. So um, could you do me an enormous favor and send me what you passed in? Or sure. send it to Bob and he can send it to me. I'd really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I think I have your email. I'll just I'll send it to you and Bob both. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think uh, you'll see Ed's email when I send out the invitation to the wiki. Yeah, I don't, email I don't remember if I tried it. I think maybe if I do it from a web browser, it's okay. But when I do it with Get HTTP, it's, it's a problem. Okay. The other difference I see is I think, Raul, you've got administrative privileges, don't you? I'm doing it. Um, I I'm doing it from Jay, which means I'm I'm not logged in. Okay. Okay. Because um, let's see, we've got some right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Not pro. Get speech. So, so because I've had the benefit of actually playing with this, <laughs> I've got a couple of things just to mention uh, about the interface, just uh, uh, things I've noticed. Um, 
One, I really like the way that uh, sliding up and down with the blue highlighting on the on the uh, left bar works. Uh, that's. It took me a while to figure out at first that you only zoom, you only slide when you're over the blue, and when you're over the white is when you can select. It's a really nice, elegant way of doing things, and um, I, I like the feedback that gives. Really, it's it's great. One thing I did notice, and this might be. I'm not sure how this fits in. Last week, I think we were talking about what happens when you actually click on a category heading. You're clicked on essays right now, or any of those, because they're my categories. That's showing you a category page, but it doesn't actually show you the category page, does it? So if you go up and highlight R3 at the top of there, it's going to show me Art Anger Essays Index. It's not actually showing me the category page, which will have content on it. Well, I think, and it's entirely possible that the crawler is glitchy. I, I will not answer for that. I think that Essays R3 is showing the pages that are associated with the Essays R3 category page. That's so, exactly what it's doing, yeah. But it's but not that's showing- not what you're looking for. No, it's not showing the, the Essays R3 page. No, the Essays R3 page is, the, the, the category pages, qua category pages are never shown. They are simply a source of structure okay. and a source of pages that are owned by each of the category nodes. But I never show the category pages themselves. That's true. I, I could. Okay, so that's my question is if you could, because those those category pages as we're developing context content for the different categories will become more useful. So where I noticed is I went down to the contributing to the wiki category and I found I couldn't actually see the stuff I'd been developing on it because I can't actually see the actual category page. I can only see the things that's attached right. to it, which is useful, all right. so but all the stuff I'm putting in is in that in, under that green right now. All right, so it's unfair to think of the category pages as strictly a source of structure and organization. They have actual content in their own right and need to be displayed. I'm with you. I can yeah. do that. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, that's no that's I, I I found that out this morning. I was playing around with it again. I thought, oh, wow, I can't. Where huh. is it? Well, well, the thing is, the other part of it, the other part of it that I might be able to do, uh, and again, this is probably me bending things to fit your interface so if your interface can adapt to it that's great but the other thing i could do is i don't have to have these categories hidden i've i've hidden them now so they don't show up on the pages but because they don't show up on the pages i don't have the option to go over to the page and then go down and find that category like for instance i can't go to uh help templates or something which is a page and scan click on that category to get back to it because on that page the category doesn't show up it's hidden so I've kind of double boxed uh, myself there. You wouldn't be able to anyway in this tool because, oh no, I guess you would. Yeah, yeah I, I, that you was the other thing. At, I, can go, I, can, I can click on, on your, your, your right panel just like it was a web page. I can go all over the place with that. Once I'm looking right. at it, once I've yeah, selected it, I've got full source, control. You can Absolutely. You can work with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how interesting. That hadn't occurred now, to me, I guess. When, when I view source, though, I haven't gone to try to go in and edit, but if I made edits there, my guess is because this is actually sequestered, you know, in, in my, in your, in your file there, it's actually not going to be making changes back to the, the well, actual. Actually, the, the current version uh, is not using a cache anymore. It's actually okay, loading okay. pages on the fly, but okay. you're not logged in. No, but it there would is be a login link. Me, there, yeah, the login links there. I could log in <laughs> and make oh, changes. Okay. I guess that's true. Yeah. 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 Right. If it if it's if it's live as a wiki page, absolutely I could do that. Yeah. Which is right. that's cool. <laughs> right. It gives you another way. It, it, it's the old school way of doing things, but it does but course, give you another way of exploring things. I, the question is, does how does WebView support cookie tracking, which is necessary for login? And also, when you mix metaphors, when you when you you've done stuff on the left, and you go over here and you and you start navigating to other pages, does that still preserve the original context, the the original cookies? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't have an intuition about that. 
the one thing you've done, I'm not seeing it on this version, but when you select, you were actually showing the URL above the middle pane. Is that right? Is that still there? Oh, yeah. If you click on a, yeah. and I put this in for your convenience, although maybe it doesn't really matter if you can, if you can um, edit the page directly. Uh, but yeah, you, I couldn't figure out how to get to the paste buffer, but you could command C that URL and paste it into a conventional browser and uh, you know, do what you need to do. That, uh, that text element is just a, a JQT text element, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There you, can, you, you have control, you have events, you can actually uh, pull up the contents of that. When, when you do certain things. So you just have to put a button that says, I want to use that, and it will actually give you the contents. Like you no, have I'm a way sure programmatically. I yeah, I know I yeah, can no, grab it's... it. The question is, can I put it in the paste buffer, the Mac paste buffer? That's the part I'm unclear on. I think I... WD clip paste still, is still supported. I, I should double check that. Oh, yeah? All right. I believe it is. Okay. Yeah. I'll look up. Yeah. Yep. I wonder what will happen if I search for that. It's a single run together word. Uh, oh, the BD paste. Yep, looks like the current command reference still mentions clip paste. It's two words run together as a command. What's happening with my video? I'm, I'm not on my usual machine, so I'm going to keep it off. If you can see, it looks pretty weird. It That's looks sideways. Kind of <laughs> sideways and distorted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I need to reboot things. So I won't do that now. Yeah. No, don't, don't, because we don't want to lose you. <laughs> we can hear you fine. Yeah. I do have some. So I, I do have some uh, things I've been doing, uh, putting categories on NYC jug pages, which uh, when there's a chance, I'd like to show. Okay. Oh yeah, by all means, let me stop my share. Well, actually, I wanted to show one more thing. Okay. Uh, oh. If you, if you can grab it back at, I just want to show one one more thing because I, I, you may have a way around it, but. Uh, sure. And it's to do with the with the um, uh, the search of the forums. When you go to the programming forum. So yeah. you go to 2007. If you go over the names there, it's going to jump, right? No, it stays at 2007. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Because when I was doing it, it was jumping around on the numbers as I went up and down. But I guess I wasn't getting far enough. Really? Over. Yeah. That's possible. And it's also possible that it's just a bug. So thank you. Um, it, I'm, it, not, I'm not. Yeah, no, it's locking <laughs> just the way I would have thought. Just like what I was finding was when I say I set 2008 and I want to go to September, when I went over, if I, if I came up, I was probably too close to the greens, I'm guessing. Because you can go I over and now it's at September, right? Yeah, no, that's right. That's exactly how you'd want it to work. Yeah, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll check that again. But that's the only other yeah, thing. Yeah, could you? I, and if you could, yeah. if you, if you're feeling really ambitious if you could make a video if it misbehaves that would be great yeah yeah i will do um, that I've, I've learned over the years only to respect bug reports uh, <laughs> even if they don't seem reasonable right at the outset okay well